Welcome to the Tree of Life podcast. My name is Joel Edford, and I'm here today with my guest, Dr. Jason Bond. Jason, welcome. Thanks, Joel. So one of the things that we usually do in this podcast is start out with just a brief introduction about your background. And so I'm curious, how did you end up at UC Davis? When did you first start getting interested in the science, and how did you end up getting here? Um, well, I first got interested in science as an undergraduate, so I was a... Um, uh, an undergraduate biology major at, uh, at a small university in North Carolina, Western Carolina University, and I started working with a couple of arachnologists uh, that, uh, there on, on faculty at, uh, at Western. Um, one was uh, one, one fellow by the name of Fred Coyle, who was a spider systematist, and his, uh, his area of specialty was uh, trapdoor spiders and tarantulas and um, uh, yeah, well, I <laughs> started working with him, and, <laughs> and I've, I've been working on spiders since. Uh, I joined the faculty in the Department of Entomology and Nematology here at, um, at UC Davis uh, two years ago. Um, I'm, I was previously uh, the director of the uh, Auburn University uh, Museum of Natural History at, at Auburn University. And, uh, and was also the department chair there, as well as a, a faculty member in, in biology. Okay, that's, that's really, that's really that's a great story. So it, one, one of the things that um, stands out there to me is, you know, early on you were exposed to people working on spiders. What kind of influence did those people have on you? Did you ever explore any other kinds of organisms or was it always, you know, you were pretty focused on spiders? Um, well, when I first started as an undergraduate, like, uh, like many undergraduates, I, um, uh, I was, my uh, initial interests were going to, you know, I was going to go, going to go to medical school. Um, oftentimes, uh, undergraduate biology majors don't really know um, what they, uh, you know, well, they don't, uh, they don't know what the, really what the options are aside from, from going into medicine, and I was no exception. Um, but, uh, you know, I took a couple of classes. I got interested in evolutionary biology. Uh, 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 Dr. Coyle and um, uh, a, uh, an, another evolutionary biologist that was on faculty there also took, uh, took I took a tropical biodiversity course and we, uh, we spent, some time in, um, spent some time in Costa Rica at the, oh, wow. the uh, OTS, the Organization for Tropical Studies uh, field stations. and. Um, uh, and I got really interested in in both field biology, but also the field of of spider taxonomy and systematics. Great. So today we're really here to talk about a real special spider that you recently discovered, and this is a spider that you've known about for quite some time, but um, has a little bit of a story there in terms of looking for the opposite sex. Um, so maybe. Could you give us a little background? What, what and when did you first discover this spider? Where is it at? Why is this area special? And what are your plans with, with, this, with this spider? So um, I, uh, I've been working on um, California trapdoor spiders since, uh, since I was a graduate student in the, in the 1990s. And um, I think, I, I guess in 1996, uh, so that was, 24 years ago. Uh, that's a bit, that's shocking. Um, so 24 years ago, I was collecting uh, trapdoor spiders uh, that uh, that are that are found on the on the beaches in sand dunes along the coast of California, and uh, there was uh, I knew of one species that was on the central coast and specifically around the Monterey. Uh, Monterey area, just north of there, uh, Salinas is a is a beach, uh, is a, a state park called Moss Landing State Beach, and um, there's nice dune habitat there. So I, I collected, um, I found the species that I was looking for that I expected to find there, but uh, but in the process, you know, while I was collecting that one, I I, I managed to dig up uh, a couple of specimens of a of a really unique looking. Uh, uh, trapdoor spider. Um, it was related, at least it was within the same family as the as the uh, the spider that I was looking for. Um, it's the family Euctinizidae, uh, and uh, but it was 
it was it was quite different. In fact, I, I as soon as I as soon as I pulled it out of the pulled it out of the ground, uh, these are trapdoor spiders. So they build burrows into the in this case into the sand, and they cover the burrow with a, a trap door that they construct using silk and sand. Uh, they sit under those they sit under those trap doors and they they wait for some dull-witted insect to come along and they jump out and they uh, they bite the prey item and um, they bite the insect and they uh, envenomate it and then they return to the bottom of their burrow where they feed on it. Um, so I was digging these spiders out of the ground and you know and as I said one of these specimens was just way different than anything I had I had ever seen. Uh, I immediately uh, sort of thought to myself that it looked like it was a it was an, a new genus um, a new genus of of trapdoor spider, um, but uh, I I didn't really know much about it at the time. Uh, there are a couple of ways that we sort of can can confirm that something might be a new genus, or or at least determine what it's most closely related to. And uh, you know, we, I, I use a couple of of approaches. One is looking at its morphology. So what does you know what what does it um, you know what are its physical features that might uh, that might um, associate that we might use to associate it with a with an existing genus or an existing uh, species, and um, and we also use molecular data, so uh, DNA data to to look at what its relationships are to to other uh, uh, to other taxa, and um, and it was a it was probably a couple of years later uh, before. We had the, or before I had the, the molecular data that we could use to to associate this, and, and the molecular data seemed to to support my my notion that it was a that it was a new genus, but but I was missing a, a male specimen, and and males all I had managed to collect from burrows were females, and uh, you know so I would say for nearly every at least once if not twice every year for the next 20 years uh, I continued to you know every time I was out in California I would go out to Moss Landing and I would I'd look around and see if there were any males that might be out of their burrows looking for females um, I would also dig up a few um, a, a few spiders to see if I could maybe catch a male while he was still in his burrow and was just um, I was just unsuccessful, so the, the, this really remarkable find uh, went uh, nearly a, a quarter of a century uh, undescribed simply because I didn't feel like I had the material, to, the su sufficient material to describe it. So the, um, if I'm just summarizing here, you have a trapdoor spider that lives in sand dunes and Moss Landing is really close to the ocean. I mean, you're on the beach, essentially. And so it's hard to kind of see these spiders because they make that door that is covered with sand and so it blends in perfectly to the environment. And the male sort of stands out here. And I guess the question really is, why is the male so important? Why do you need the male to um, help you corroborate whether or not it's a new, a new thing? Sure, well, males have, um, uh, so, so these the, these species are you know what we would characterize as sexually dimorphic. So females and males look different, and the males uh, in trapdoor spiders and tarantulas, uh, the males tend to have a set of features that um, uh, that we use um, that are related to to reproduction, uh, secondary what we what we might characterize or what we do characterize as secondary sexual characteristics, so modifications of their pedipalps, the first small set of appendages, shorter set of appendages you see hanging off the front of the spider. And then in, in trapdoor spiders, the first set of walking legs are also highly modified as well. And those are, those are what we would characterize as, those modifications are what we would characterize as mating claspers. And those are you know, they often have uh, sort of fancy spines or claws or, or uh, you know, some sort of, um, we call it an apophysis or, you know, some sort of, um, like a hook kind of yeah, like a hook uh, hanging, off the, hanging off the front of it, you know, or on their, on their tibia, for example. And, um, you know, these features we suspect, highly suspect, 
uh, allow um, uh, allow females to distinguish between conspecifics. If a male shows up um, to her burrow and would like to mate, uh, those features are you know provide really strong clues to her that uh, that he's the he's the correct species. A female doesn't want to accidentally mate with the you know with the wrong species that could jeopardize her um, she could end up investing uh, um, resources in, in um, uh, reproductive resources and in, in offspring that wouldn't be viable or offspring that that might not might not be able to live so it's th those features not only are important for us uh, or at least, well I should say they're not only important for a for a female but for us when we're looking at a spider under the microscope it's those types of features that also uh, allow us to, to distinguish between species uh, and, in, and in this case, uh, also genera. So there, there, are, there are very, um, uh, at least in this particular family of spiders, uh, those modifications tend to, uh, there, there, there tends to be um, sort of a, a set of those modifications that we can associate, you know, from one genus to the next. Well, we we managed to f we managed to get uh, one male. Which I have right here in my pocket. <laughs> we managed to get one single male specimen uh, f uh, back in um, I must have to look in uh, back in November, October of um of last year so right at the end of of this past year and in, in 2019 and uh we did it by uh by uh setting out what we call pitfall traps so of course first and foremost we worked with um uh the folks at uh california state parks to get permission uh that the habitat out there is really uh uh, is not only is it important for spiders, but um, there's a, a bird species that nests out there. So we had to be mindful of where we were, when, and where we were putting traps. And uh, you know, so we, I, if I recall, we got those put in sometime around the first of September, and then pretty regularly drove from Davis over to over to uh, over to Moss Landing and um, and check the check the traps. And then finally, uh, uh, finally in October, um, we managed to managed to get uh, one specimen out of the you know out of those traps. So it was a uh, it was a yeah it was it was a that was a really uh, I I I still am uh, you know excited about having found the spe found a specimen, and then um, and I'm I'm forever worried I'm going to lose it. <laughs> I'll be I'll be happy to have it everything described and and have it uh, safely uh, deposited in the in the collection in the the Bohart um, insect uh, insect collection at uh, at UC Davis. So um, now that you have the male, I guess one question I would have is, did your predictions hold true? Does it have unusual secondary char characteristics? Yeah, absolutely. It uh, th there there were some superficial characteristics that that um well th there were some superficial you know s some sort of basic physical characteristics along with the molecular data that quite surprisingly um it, on both counts uh suggested or, or at least um indicated strongly actually that it was closely related to a genus out in um out in arizona and new mexico uh, uh which is you know which is quite a distance. I mean, we're talking over a th over a thousand miles, well, close to a thousand miles, and um, uh, so based on based on those those general characteristics in the molecular data, it, it was possible that it could have had. Uh, it, one might have predicted that it had some that it had some features that uh, that would have um, uh, that. Might have, might have suggested that we include it with the genus in in New Mexico and Arizona, but uh, but in fact it it was it was quite different. So it was, you know, that there was, um, 
the, the features that we use to, to diagnose or to recognize the genus in, um, in, that we find in New Mexico and Arizona, this particular spider doesn't have those features. It has a, an entirely unique uh, set of mating clasper features that, um, that don't allow us to place it with any of the existing genera. Wow, that's, that's great. So now that you have the male and it definitely it looks different and the intent is to describe it in a formal scientific publication. So I guess my next question is, is that you, you've suggested earlier that you need some help. You're, you're looking for some help with this and um, I'm sort of curious, uh, what's, the, what's the help you need? What can our viewers uh, help you with? <laughs> So what, what we were thinking is, is we, we do have a, um, uh, we have an idea of what the genus name is. So, so it's, a, it's a new genus and, and the name that we're going to propose for it is, is, is Cryptotoniza. So the, the family that it belongs to is Eutonizidae. Uh, Toniza is, um, uh, you know, the, the, the name, the sort of that root name Toniza uh, is we think the f from that original name is in reference to a, a comb-like structure that's on the on the uh, on the chelicerae of the spider that's thought to uh, the spider's thought to use to to um, uh, to help dig their burrow. Um, this spider, uh, this particular genus, doesn't really that comb is. Um, uh, it really, do, it's really, it really doesn't have one. There, there are some vestiges of it. So there's a, there, there's, you can see where, you know, it has sort of the remains of it. So crypto, of course, hidden. Um, I thought it had sort of a double meaning, uh, both uh, a hidden uh, comb-like structure, this thing that we call the rastellum. Uh, and of course the spider is, has remained hidden for many, many years. You know, think how, you know, the, this, this new genus that's, that's on this, uh, uh, beach and you know in central California how is it how has it gone uh, uh, completely uh, you know entirely undiscovered in fact it, it w w I'll, I'll mention here that that uh, new spe it's really unusual to to discover a new species a new genus uh, uh, in the field uh, th those sorts of discoveries today are usually from specimens that are found in museum collections. New species sit on, you know, tend to sit on the shelf of a museum collection for, uh, you know, 25 or more years sometime, uh, sometimes before a taxonomist comes along and who knows something about the group and, and describes it. So most of the new species that I've described over the years have been from, have been from uh, species that I've discovered in museum collections. Whereas this one and a new genus, we've actually, you know, actually, actually discovered it uh, on a beach. So uh, it, it just, yeah, it's you know that that to me is really remarkable. So, so we I have it, we have this idea about a, a genus name, uh, Cryptotoniza, but we haven't come up with the the second part of that name. You know what we what we call the specific epithet. Uh, so the. That's like Exactly, right. So the species, yeah, in, in that case, Homo sapiens is the species name. Of course, that is a two-part name, Homo being the genus, sapiens being what we call the specific epithet. And um, what I was going to suggest was is that, uh, that we, um, uh, we solicit uh, your viewers <laughs> for, um, uh, for suggestions on, on what they think we should, we should name the species. Um, I've, uh, you know, and, and species names are, you know, and we'll include with the video uh, some, uh, some photographs of the, I presume we can include with the video, yeah, some, some photographs of the spider, um, uh, some photographs of the, 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 the beach there at, uh, at, at Moss Landing. Um, so uh, oftentimes when taxonomists name spiders, or well, they name species, uh, there are you know, sorts of all all sorts of possibilities that you can choose from. Um, you can um, uh, you can you can uh, name the species based on some physical characteristic. Uh, you could name the species, you know, based on um, 
uh, something about where it was found, you know, the locality, uh, you know, uh, maybe something about the surrounding area. But then uh, oftentimes we also have a lot of fun with, with species names. Um, I've named um, uh, trapdoor spiders for Star Wars characters. Um, uh, the, um, uh, there's one uh, Tostigus uh, sarlacc, uh, <laughs> which is a uh, which is a species found out in the um, uh, out in the Mojave uh, out in the Mojave Desert. Um, I've named uh, we've named uh, species for um, oh like famous photographer uh, uh, Depression era photographer uh, Dorothea Lang. Um, uh, named a, a spider species for. Uh, um, Stephen Colbert, uh, talk show host, and uh, I guess now he's the, is it the Late Show or yeah, he's on the yeah now Stephen's on the, uh, on the uh, on the Late Show. Uh, so, I've I've named um, uh, spider species for uh, um, uh, like Neil Young, um, Angelina Jolie. So you know famous people. Um, you know so, so so there's there's all sorts of possibilities and it's. You know, it's up to the it's up to the person um, describing the species to you know to 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 come up with a name. You know, probably about the only thing that taxonomists don't do is they they um, they don't name the species for themselves. <laughs> you know, you might name it for someone else or or uh, or or something else. But uh, um, so uh, so yeah, I was thinking it'd be a nice idea to 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 uh, to sort of ask the the public to you know to to give us some ideas about you know about who they you know who or what they might they might like to name the species now um, Joel and I are going to uh, are going to look over those names and 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 choose uh, you know, what we think is the you know the best name we we don't want to end up in a uh, in a position of putting it out for vote and end up with you know, right. Spider Mick smiley face, or uh, I think the Coast Guard ended up with a, a really unfortunate boat name, uh, ship name, uh, uh, using using that approach. And and we you know we don't want to do that with the spider. The the you know um, while we have a little bit of fun with this uh, naming uh, species, um, you know these are uh, you know these species names uh, essentially are. Are, are, are forever um, you know we uh, the the sort of the science of of classifying and naming new species goes all the way back to uh, to 1758 and those species that were named um, uh, by Linnaeus and uh, and actually by a a, a, a spider taxonomist uh, cleric um, uh, are you know among the first names that we that we the first uh, uh, scientific names that we recognize as valid, and uh, those are um, uh, well, those are you know what uh, you know near two hundred you know over two hundred years old uh, uh, now. So um, so you know we tend to take this you know like I said we tend to have fun with it, but we also you know take it a little you know take it pretty seriously when you you know when we name a species we you know it's quite possible that. 250 years from now, someone will, you know, will, uh, you know, will collect that species out at Moss Landing, and they'll see the name that, you know, that we've, you know, that we've that we've put on it. Well, thank you very much for coming on the show today and explaining this really great and super interesting discovery. And so, what we'll do is we'll we'll come back on and make another video and and show people the results and hopefully come up with a new and interesting name for this unique species. Thank you. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed the content but would like an audio-only version, please go to iTunes and look up Tree of Life UC Davis. If you want to see more videos on YouTube, please click the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the little bell icon if you want to receive notifications of new content.